Okay, so the first way I said the antibiotic resistance could work is by producing an enzyme that destroyed the antibiotic. The second way is something called target modification. Most antibiotics and most chemicals interact with the cell by interacting with proteins that fit together like a lock and key. So in this example, you have an antibiotic in blue, and it binds to its target in a very specific way. One way the cell can become resistant to that antibiotic is by changing the target. So instead of having a shape, this is a very simplified thing, but changing the shape so that it no longer binds the antibiotic properly. Uh, an example of this are mutations in the ribosome that make the cell resistant to the antibiotic streptomycin. And I'll show you another example in a moment. Another drug I haven't mentioned yet is called vancomycin. And it uses this kind of mechanism. So vancomycin is this very complex molecule. Uh, it's used to treat MRSA or MRSA, which is Staphylococcus aureus that is resistant already to methicillin, the most common uh, antibiotic that would be used for Staph aureus. So these are a big problem. Vancomycin is what is used to treat them. Vancomycin resistance is now seen and growing, and I'm going to explain how it occurs. Now, I showed this last week when I was talking about ampicillin or penicillin. So you have the cell wall, the peptidoglycan, where you have these two peptides that have to be cross-linked together by an enzyme called penicillin binding protein. Penicillins work by binding the, the uh, enzyme and preventing it from binding, right? Vancomycin actually works differently here, but still on the cell wall. Here you have the two peptides that should be linked together. Vancomycin binds to the peptides themselves. And therefore, the enzyme that needs to do that cross-linking isn't able to bind there anymore. So with time, the cell gets big holes in the peptidoglycan glycan and they burst. Now vancomycin resistance is very clever. If you look here, here's the peptide. And at the end is a little red ball. The red is alanine. In a vancomycin resistant cell, Instead of putting an alanine in that position, it puts a different subunit, which is lactate. So now it's purple there. What that means is it's changed the target. And now vancomycin can kind of bind, but not very well. And so the, uh, the cell wall crosslinking enzyme can fit in there and do its job and make the crosslink. So now this cell is vancomycin resistant by changing the target. So that's the second big way resistance can occur. The third way is something called an efflux pump. So here in gray is the membrane. And in gram negatives, you also have the outer membrane up here. These are proteins that form a channel through the membrane and work as pumps to pump the antibiotic out of the cell. What happens, therefore, is it's as if you have a pump in a boat or something, and you're taking on water, you just pump out the water, or you pump out the antibiotic, and there never gets to be enough antibiotic in the cell to cause a problem, or enough water in the boat. The terrible thing about efflux pumps is they often recognize more than one antibiotic. So this family of efflux pumps pump out both amyoglycosides and fluoroquinolones. Amyoglycosides are ones that target the ribosome. And the R&D family does multiple drugs and pumps them out of the cell. So these are problematic because if you get one of these, you're resistant to many things all at once. 
The last mechanism is called resistance bypass. So you remember I told you about this tetrahydrofolic acid pathway in metabolism, where you have two drugs that inhibit the pathway. Bacteria can mutate so that they make this compound, tetrahydrofolate, through a different pathway. They either produce it through a completely different pathway or they increase the amount of the precursor up here, PALBA, so that it forces the reaction to go through. So it doesn't really change the target, it just doesn't care anymore. All right, so those are the four basic ways.